story of the universe, a web of intimate connections and infinite possibilities. Here we are in a web of intimate connections and intimate possibilities. Just let that look a little bit in the head. Let it go. What's that? What's infinite? What connections are possible here this morning? What possibilities are here? Welcome all. Whether, whoever you are, whatever reason for coming here this morning, whatever you believe, whoever you love, you are so welcome here amongst us. Do you feel welcome? Yeah. Got nice smiley faces. What is the pattern that connects the crab to the lobster and the primrose to the orchid and all of them to me and me to you? That's a quotation from Gregory Bateson. What pattern connects us in the deepness of what we what we are? Are we getting into the, that holy space? Because it makes all the difference, doesn't it? How we feel here determines what we do out there. And how we feel about what's out there is here in our feelings. It's amazing, that connection. When we have that connection between heart and mind and all that is, then our hearts are truly in a holy place. Shall we have a story? Are you ready for a story? Yeah. Now this is about connection, this story. So how connected are we? Well, let's go back a little while to a long time to some in, in Indian tradition, Indian scripture and have our story read in respect. One night, at the end of one of the Vasa retreats in the Jetavana Park in Sravasti, one of the followers of Buddha asked him, Master, what is the ultimate foundation of life and the world? Siddhartha Gautama raised his eyes to the sky and contemplated the stars. Then he smiled as if remembering. The ultimate foundation of life and the world is the net of Indra, God of the natural forces that protect and nourish life, he finally said, lowering his eyes to look with affection at his disciple. Indra established the foundations of the world in the Tushita heaven. To do this, he hung over his palace on Mount Meru a net of silk threads like a spider's web, which extends to infinity in all directions. In each knot of the net, he put a precious gem which reflects in all its perfect facets all the other gems that cover the net. When you approach to look into any one of those gems, you discover that the gems reflected in it reflect in turn each and every one of the other gems of this immense silk fabric and so on to infinity. I do not understand, Master, said the disciple Sammy. Where are all those gems you're talking about? I do not see them in the world. You are one of those gems, Buddha replied. And every person, every animal, every tree and plant, every insect, every speck of dust that floats up into a sunbeam, and down onto a road is a gem of the net of Indra. Even thousands of years ago, 
and every idea that has crossed the mind of each being since the beginning of time is a gem of Indra's net. Within you is reflected everything that exists and everything that has ever existed in the universe. And you, yourself, are reflected in everything that exists. You are inside each human being, each animal, tree and plant, each speck of dust, each idea or thought, each feeling to infinity. At every moment, the whole world is within you and you are inside everything that exists. Although in your mind you see yourself as an independent being and you feel separated from the rest of the world, in truth, you are part of the common existence of everything that has ever been. You could never exist by virtue of yourself, by yourself alone, because you exist by virtue of the glorious existence of everything around you. A tear appeared in the eye of the disciple and all the stars in the sky were reflected in it as if in a gem. And Gautama Buddha added with a look that seemed to caress the soul of the disciple, that is why I say to all of you to take care of the happiness of everything that surrounds you, of all beings, whether you believe that they live and feel or not, because they have their existence also in the depths of your heart. Can you begin this? Reading. Did you have a wow moment? Anybody else have a wow mm -hmm. moment there? Yes. My goodness. Everything connected by these gems. We all are one. We're all diamonds. We're all sapphires. Shiny. If you're one of us. That's rather special, isn't it? Mm. What do you think? <clears throat> Just, just think about that. It's a, a very special moment. Perhaps it's a moment when we can go into silence within ourselves. And in the silence, discover that for ourselves. I'm hearing, I'm hearing my children in the back of the car. We start a long journey, and about two miles down the road, this what's the question now? Are we there yet? Where's the toilet? Are we, are, are we there? That's the journey we're on. We might be asking ourselves, oh, are we there yet? What's the importance of silence? Where does it take us? What happens when you put the W with holy? What word do you end up with? Holy. 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 So we put the whole, if we put, Unitarians put the W with the holy. We've got holy. We've got Unitarianism. The oneness. That's what it stands for, isn't it? Unitarianism. Mm -hmm. It's the oneness. Do we take time for reflection and prayer? Can we to use some diverse sources? It's not the Jewish prayer for peace. <clears throat> Jewish say, deep within the still center of my being, may I find peace. Silently, 
when the quiet of the grove, may I share peace gently with the greatest circle of humankind, may I radiate peace. Do it also have a vow. If you don't do much in Unitarian, we don't take vows, do we really? This is really interesting language. Jury vow. I swear by peace and love to stand heart to heart and hand in hand. Mark, O Spirit, hear me now, confirming my sacred vow. Here we are, standing heart to heart and hand in hand. That's what we're doing here, Spirit. Coming together in union. Being one another. Now an alternative version of the Lord's Prayer. But this time translated from Arabic. I don't know, sorry. Mm -hmm. From the other one. I remember it. Different. From the Aramaic language, which, which is the language, as far as we know, that Jesus spoke. O cosmic birther, of above all radiance and vibration, Soften the ground of our being and carve out a space within us where your presence can abide. Fill us with your creativity so that we may be empowered to bear the fruits of your mission. Let each of our actions bear fruit in accordance with our desire. Endow us with the wisdom to produce and share what each being needs to grow and flourish. Untie the tangled threads of destiny that bind us as we release others from the entanglement of past mistakes. Do not let us be seduced by what, by what which, by that, by that which would divert us from our true purpose, but illuminate the opportunities of our present moment. You are the ground and the fruitful vision, the birth power and fulfillment as all is gathered and made whole again. And so I say, Amen. Mm -hmm. Not in mm -hmm. the, the, what we call the Lord's Prayer may have actually been something like that. As we take it from the Aramaic. More stillness, not quite. Just for us to absorb what we've heard here this morning and share it together. of all universes. May we stand in awe before you. We don't know the answers. We have more answers, less answers than we have questions. But we can grow and we can unite if we have a mind and heart to do so. May we find a way to feed our hungry world 
may we find a way of playing a small part, our part, in making a difference. And may we thank you, whoever you are, however we determine what you are, and what we believe you are. <clears throat> may we all come in awe and wonder at the deep connection as jewels within the web, the web of jewels shining. We are jewels. We have light. Let's not hide it beneath a bushel. Amen. So let it be. Now we join as one. That's connection. That's a beautiful part of our faith. That's what we aim for. Because we're imperfect. Sometimes our little gems do not shine as brightly as they might. Do not be deterred. Friends, don't be deterred. Just think about the beautiful connections we've talked about and the wonder and awe that are in our worship. And together, we'll find a way. It may not be the way that we thought we were finding, it may be that our satin is broken and we have to rely on the old map book. Remember the old map books? Oh, yeah. Still there. There we are, see? We're quite traditional, aren't we? <laughs> yes, indeed. That is why we were off Peach, off the, off the main runway down the, the ski slope and it's dangerous and it's rugged but the views the views have not been seen before today and we see them we see new heights new depths and we grow in wisdom if we allow our hearts to be in a holy place so a final reading take that heart He raises a piece of paper and he shows the piece of paper to the audience when he's speaking. He says this, you don't have to be a poet to see a tree in this small piece of paper. We can see a tree and if we look a bit deeper we can also see the clouds and the rainfall that was necessary for the tree to grow. We can see the earth, the minerals of the earth nourishing the tree. We also see the woodlogger who has cut down the tree. Logger had breakfast that morning, so the bread he ate that morning is in this piece of paper too. And the field of wheat from which the bread was made we can see the truck transporting the tree, the fuel needed for the truck to drive, and so on. So if we look at this small piece of paper, we can see the whole universe in it. Nothing can exist by itself alone. Have we been on a join on the internet? How many have joined today? One. Yeah, welcome. So there's a connection that we need to be aware of that's been with us all morning. Thank you. Go in peace. Deeply connected. You and I with everything else. <laughs>